Crisis 2 has a lot of expectations to live up to. It's the sequel to what many consider to be a landmark PC title, a game that set the benchmark for PC graphics upon its release. In addition to that, it's also the first game that developer Crytek has made simultaneously for consoles as well as the PC. Thankfully, Crisis 2 does not collapse under the pressure and delivers a fun, often thrilling experience with plenty of value for shooter fans. Set three years after the events of the original Crisis, New York City has been devastated by an invasion from an alien race known as the Ceph, and people are becoming infected with alien bacteria at an alarming rate. You play as Alcatraz, a silent marine who is being sent into the hot zone on a seemingly standard rescue mission. Almost immediately, the submarine you're in is destroyed, and your squad gets massacred, you along with it. Thankfully for Alcatraz, Prophet, a character fans remember from the original Crisis, who wears a high-tech nano suit, drags you to safety. Without spoiling how, Prophet gives you the suit and entrusts you with the safety of his friend and your late squad's intended target, Dr. Gould. The story tries very hard to explain everything that's going on. There is a lot of technical jargon about how the suit works and the alien DNA infecting the population, which will likely go right over your head. There's also a corporation that wants your nano suit, other characters who want to help you, and the military needs help with evacuation plans. There's a lot going on here, and it can be somewhat confusing. One of Crisis 2's biggest faults is it makes practically no effort to help newcomers to the series. It's just assumed you know about the different factions and character histories. This stands out more in Crisis 2 since most console gamers never played the original PC title. This makes it nearly impossible to care about the characters that you encounter. The story isn't the most compelling, but it guides you from one amazing set piece to the next and does keep you just intrigued enough to want to know what's going to happen next. Even without a truly engaging story, the campaign stays fun throughout its 8 to 10 hour length. If judged solely by its shooting mechanics, Crisis 2 would be considered solid. Its loadout is pretty standard with one or two exceptions, and its action feels similar to most other shooters. What makes Crisis 2 stand out is the addition of the suit. It offers you a lot of flexibility in how you tackle each encounter, and is very effective in making you feel like a one-man army. That's not to say you're invincible by any means, but you definitely feel like you have an advantage over the droves of human and alien soldiers you're tasked with fighting. The suit grants you three primary powers, mobility, strength, and stealth. Mobility is simply activated by sprinting or holding the jump button. You can leap to the roofs of smaller buildings, quickly flank your enemies, and slide from cover to cover. Strength lets you pick up objects to throw at enemies, grab enemies themselves for a one-hit kill, and provides the armor enhancement, which gives you extra protection from gunfire and explosions, making you invulnerable for a short time. Finally, there's Stealth, which puts you in a cloak that makes you near invisible. With this ability, you can sneak by patrols undetected, avoiding combat altogether, silently eliminate every guard with a stealth kill, or duck out of sight from pursuing enemies. To balance the game, there is an energy meter on the bottom right of the screen that drains as you use these various abilities. This forces you to use your powers carefully, lest you be caught in the open with no energy left. The suit can also be upgraded with various enhancements, which range from simply letting you cloak longer to enemy bullet tracers that let you know where the enemy fire is coming from. The level design is split between open environments and corridor sections. Each area is fun to explore, though the open environments have a lot more verticality to them and provide much more flexibility in how you approach a given situation. Every style of play is rewarding. You'll feel the same amount of satisfaction plowing through a heavily guarded checkpoint as you will sneaking past groups of unaware guards. You're never forced to play one way or the other, leaving you to decide the best approach. The real issue with the gameplay of Crisis 2 is its AI. It is extremely inconsistent. Enemies will occasionally stand still, oblivious to what's happening around them, or get stuck on something or someone, resulting in an odd animation loop. There are also times where you'll be completely out of sight from nearby guards, only to decloak and have them all sound the alarm. It's a big enough issue to detract from the overall experience. The suit and map design carry over into the game's multiplayer. Crisis 2 contains the now standard perks and unlock system from other games, as well as killstreaks, though they are not customizable. The modes are standard, with Team Deathmatch, King of the Hill, and Capture the Flag. The suit is what makes multiplayer truly feel unique. Suit powers are toned down from the campaign for balance purposes, but they are still fun to use. Maps are designed with the same verticality of the campaign, so you'll never be exactly sure where an enemy will be coming from. It leads to a frantic and addicting online experience. While it doesn't pack the same punch as the original, there's no denying Crisis 2 is technically impressive. Environments are detailed, lighting is remarkable, and explosions and gunfire look and sound like they have real power behind them. The game is bright and beautiful, though not perfect. 
Texture pop-in is occasionally noticeable, object phasing can occur, and the frame rate never stays solid when there's a lot of action on screen, which is all the time. It's an unfortunate blemish. It should be noted that these issues occurred on a copy of the game installed on an Xbox 360 hard drive, and your mileage may vary with other systems. Sound design is also largely well done, with an excellent musical score that complements the action perfectly, becoming more subtle during quieter moments. However, there were a few occasions where the music would skip seemingly at random. Voice acting, unfortunately, is largely unremarkable, though the actors do get the job done with only a few small exceptions. Crisis 2 is a great action title that is a breath of fresh air in today's crowded military shooter market. The suit never gets old to use and allows the game to be played however you decide, and has multiplayer that is both fun and addicting. Even with its few noticeable issues, Crisis 2 is worth checking out for shooter fans or those looking for something new.